the 6th of March 2024. I'm just up watching an, il an animal, an elephant, an animal that's thinking of giving birth. So I have to be keep, keep an eye. Uh, lids and vintage now if you're not into vintage or practical working in a workshop please turn off straight away this is nothing to do with politics or anything or nothing it's nothing to do with it this is vintage and this is a subject very close to my heart now if you're doing a bit of work around the place you'll have a workshop of some kind and you'll probably have a welder and you might have a set of gas bottles and you'll have an angle grinder and you'll have a drill press and a good drill press is a good investment generally speaking the ones on a bench are good enough i have one i made a bench for it and it's a big one it's an ajax it's out of a school that was uh, that was taken out of a school that didn't want it anymore and must have bought a new one and it's that big heavy cast iron and stuff and i love that kind of stuff a uh, really good heavy machine and it, if the motor goes you can replace the motor it'll drill anything and it's big and heavy and can bolt things down to it and all that but but the, 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 the thing about it is that um, uh, if you're serious about doing stuff and you'll find you'll be stuck by times, a lathe is an extremely useful thing to have. Extremely useful. And you just it's it's the only machine that can replicate itself. You can actually make a lathe on a lathe, would you believe? And you can do milling, you can have milling attachments on it, and you can do all sorts of stuff. And of course you can drill up towards your centre if you have the work spinning you can drill up through it and you can bore it and you can do all of those and shape the thing out you probably have an idea about them and there are videos there i might attach a few uh, make a few links to it what type of lid should you buy well i get nothing of kenquip but they're down in, in uh, kina in longford and they'd be worth having a chat for a second hand machine or you can buy a new one uh, there's a number of makes the Chinese ones are popular enough and they're all right. The thing I, I am afraid of with them, if they have electronics in this in the motor and that goes, will you be able to will you be stuck? You want to watch that because you don't want you don't want that. Now with uh, my lathe is a Shen, a Shen one nine hundred and I it looked to me to be Chinese. It said People's Republic of China when I bought it. I bought it of a man that I could trust. I knew he was he, he was trading up to a slightly bigger Harrison lathe and Harrison is a good make too he was trading up it's English he was trading up and I seen and I knew it was a good lathe but I got it at cheaper money because it looked to be Chinese I now realize it's Taiwanese the People's Republic of China is actually Taiwan and my god I looked at it and I said that's a great fish look it's quite fun fun with that and I bought it up and, and, and got home and, and uh, it was up it was uh, it was uh, a bit away and 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 uh, got it anyway and um uh took it home and i, know I have it 35 or 40 years and I, it done so much heavy work and it's still good you can nearly not wear them out now i don't grind in it if you're grinding in a lathe there has to be protection on the bedways otherwise the grit will get in between the saddle and the, and the bed and wear it down in the front and if you don't want that you need to watch out for that but that's another day's work so so um so what type? Well, I'd like to have a two foot bed. That means two foot between the centers. Uh, I'd like to have a two foot, a two foot bed. This is the model engineer. I did get an odd copy of it here. Uh, uh, you know, it's not for everybody, not for everybody, but I do get it anyway. But just to show you, they advertise. Now, Emco is a very good make. It's, I think it's Austrian, very good make. And they have this German make, a one here, Wabeco, Wabeco. And there's the, the lid there that they do. And it's, it's German, it must be fairly good. The problem is it's four thousand sterling. Oh, it's dear, and that seems to be only a bench lathe. Now that would be highly accurate. That would be nearly too good from round round of place. Nearly too good. Um, the Chinese want to do, but if you got a second hand decent one, now I go through a few makes. Colchester student, the small Colchester. Oh, great lathe. That could be uh, could be three phase. You want to watch that? Yet I like the single phase with a split phase motor on them. They go front and back. Uh, so, um, so what I said, the Colchester, the Colchester student was a great, great lathe. That one of them in the vocational school in Carrick Cross, and I, I used to work on it as a loading machine. So they're excellent. Now this, this uh, Wabeco is good, but dear, uh, Emco is good. They do very small lathes and very big. There's a, an Emco Eleven, number eleven, I, ideal, ideal. I don't know if they're still making them. 
there's um, Boxford in England. There's a smallish Boxford about two foot between centres, and it's uh, has it comes with a stand and all, and oh, that that'd be a real good buy. Uh, I'd say they'd be five thousand, and I'd say it'd be four thousand anyway. Um, uh, you know, they'd be dear, but good lid if they were worn too much abused. There's also the Myfords for small lids. They're a bit small. They don't have bearings in them. They have a bushing type of bearing, a solid bearing. Uh, my first quit making they're gone out of business now they're about nottingham i think in england uh, you'll see them around lads that does dynamos and starters and um what do you call it uh alternators and that for turning the the, the commutators on them uh, they're a bit small but i wouldn't rule them out if you got a middle and good one again they could be pricey enough they're a beautiful lid lovely well made lid uh, so there's various other makes like that harrison harrison is one um, uh, and all all good the British are good stuff there's a few American ones not that many uh, I know of uh, but the European ones you wouldn't have to go beyond Europe anyway and the Chinese if all goes tall if you got a smallish one I'd say you get them around you could get them around 1800 maybe a new Chinese one probably run for a long time I'm always afraid of the electrics always afraid the electrics goes the elect uh, the solenoids and mine went and I had to make a hold bracket for it and I made it and I, I run it with a push pull switch and it's perfect but you might want that hassle uh, you might not want that hassle uh, well that's what I had to do I'd have no lid only for it and um, solenoids you won't get them you won't, you won't get many of these parts now for for my lid there's nothing there's nothing on it that can go wrong that I cannot make if a, a bushing or something goes I, I, I will be able to make it and that's the only way you'll get it but uh, with the with the main taper roar bear, with the cam lock bearings in the, in the headstock i'm sure you can buy them they're metric i'm sure you can buy them but if you keep them lubricated i cannot see you ever wearing out the main spindle bearing maybe i'd have to uh, maybe be wrong on that you can make the actual parts on it to make it work like so um great machines you can cut threads you can drill you can bore uh, you can put a handle in the yard brush i mean nothing it'll do it perfectly like it just does it perfectly you, you know now i'll post a few videos here just to let you see lads doing it and around a farm on that if you want to be handy i'm sure i'm sure a lot of the the lads who do their own repairs have them a lot an awful lot of workshops have them but an awful lot of people do not know how to use them how to use them yeah it's nice to have power to the to the to the longitudinal feed in other words, if you look at this picture here, uh, you'll see that uh, that uh, the, do you see here, do you see this? This is the saddle. That's the tailstock, and that's the headstock, and this is the bed, the long thing here. Now, this saddle is powered; should be powered by a shaft uh, that spins here. That means that it moves the cutter up along uh, automatically. Now, some of them, my one does it across as well. You rarely use the one across, not a lot. You can do that by hand because you don't have that long distance. Bear in mind, you could be reducing the diameter of a shaft and it could be the full length of this, maybe two foot. And you, if you do that by hand, it's difficult to get it right. So the power to the feeds will, will, will sort that for you. But if you're just cutting across the way, you it's only short distances, so you don't have to, have to worry too much about power to the cross feed. That's what they call it, to the cross side. I have it but it's a great thing i like it i wouldn't probably buy a lid without it when you're used to it but you don't absolutely need it uh, you, you don't absolutely need it now there's a lot into using them i'm studying them all my life i'd say i'm very proficient on them i know that i know that i can and sometimes i'm, I'm there and i'm turning something i'm getting it maybe to to one tenth of a thousand of an inch or maybe one hundred of a millimeter and sometimes one two hundred of a millimeter and uh, you get so used to it that you will cut to the very very so accurate it's so accurate in fact it's so accurate that sometimes you'll uh, the tool will wear a little as you move up along we'll say you're turning a shaft like this the tool will wear and it'll be slightly bigger diameter here than here because the tool has worn a little bit across but you're talking about microns you're talking about very very small amounts and you can do stuff for an interference fit where you have to fit something in like that and you 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 um uh, you can heat it then and push this in and then when it cools it'll it'll, it'll 
it'll be tight on it you see and, and, and it'll be a, a little, that's what they call an interference fit so you can bore you can drill you can you can mill on it and you can put even a thing in the tool post and mill and i have a proper yoke for milling and you can do all sorts of stuff it'll act, actually act as a just one milling machine that has a, a, a it's not it's not down the way it's across and you can do that on the lid so there's so many things you can do on it anyway i don't want to say too much more uh, not easy to recommend someone i knew a lad saw mine one time and he went off and he bought one and he brought me up to short and it was a lovely one but that's it was just about maybe that size you know that size and sure when i looked at it didn't i see that it was a solid bushing that was in the in the headstock it wasn't a, a, a ball bearing or a roller bearing didn't i see that the housing was cracked and that got a wallet and broke and your man uh, brazed it and then uh, sold it like and i wouldn't buy one unless the headstock and the bearings in it were integral unless they were perfect i wouldn't that way you want it right that way i wouldn't mind maybe a bang on the bed where you could it won't it might matter that much but you'd like to see the slides on it whatever way they're fairly good you know you'd like to see the machining marks on them and uh, uh, you'd like to see that the back end of the the index the tail stock is it'll not be worn and look up near the headstock and see is it worn if it's worn more than the other side well then you're not going to get accuracy what's happened probably there is it's either worn out or the somebody has been grinding in it without protecting the bedways i have ground in my lathe but you have to go to a lot of a lot of a lot of trouble to do it you need to have old bed sheets and if old bed sheets don't let them be thrown out keep them there and you put them you put plastic down first and then you put the bed sheet over it you need something to stop the the, the little grit going down but you also need a sheet that will absorb it that it won't fly all over the place so that when it hits the sheet it will stay on it and then you get the sheet when it's all done and you're finished and you wrap it up and you burn it or throw it in the dump or get rid of it you do not bring it back in and shake it out because you have to protect the bed the bed is meant to run in an oil uh, slide and it's cast iron that's in them because cast iron is good for rubbing if you have one cast iron park rubbing against another it works real well in any event i can't really give you any more advice than that you'd like to have uh, at least an inch of a hole right up through the spindle so you can get long pieces in you might want to have a shaft and do the end of it and you want to let it up through it so i'd say an inch mine's inch and three eighths i think and that's grand it's not easy making them with too big a hole in them they, they tend to be less accurate you need a, a, a at least be in in keeping with the size of the size of the lathe uh, the best ones are the ones that you can take the chuck chuck off without having to bang on them or anything that damages damages the lathe and some of them have doesn't seem to be a problem but it certainly was a problem for me there was no way of holding the the the, 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 the spindle while i took off the chuck and i had to make a whole part for it so so uh, so that's the thing um yeah if you're going to buy one make sure you, if you can't go with the new one the new one of course is the safest like everything else the whole thing is if the if the bedway is good if it hasn't been badly rusted i saw one a lovely one one time and the bedway completely rusted like i don't know how you'll ever get it back um, but but all, to, all told even that one if it was cleaned up and that it would do a lot of good stuff it mightn't be just precisely accurate so it depends on what you're doing if you're making model steam engines which very few will be like this here like this here if you're making that well you need a high accurate high quality machine but if you're only doing work around the farm and a wee bit of hobby and, and drilling holes with it and it'll drill just the same as a drill press um then something a little less might do the job um i wouldn't be without one i wouldn't be without one i can say i wouldn't be without one at all so that's enough folks i've said enough there in 14 minutes i don't i'm getting it very hard to advise because it's such a complex area and there are so many pitfalls in it and technology has moved on but funny enough the original design of the lathe like the south bends in america the colchester student the colchester lathes they have never really been improved upon. They, they were perfect when they made them. And uh, they may have put different things in them and made them lighter and all that. But a lot of the things, they took away stuff from it. Like the, some of them have three. My one has three. It has the lead screw at the side. It has a, a screw then 
to operate the 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 the, the the mechanism that makes the power go up and down to the shafts and to the to the saddle and the cross slide, and then it has the it has another one then for the switch, and the switch travels with the bet with the saddle. So that means that no matter where the saddle is, you can operate the switch. Whereas if you have to reach over over with the hand, you're, you're, it's not as handy. You see, I think this one has the switches up here. I think if you're down here, that's awkward enough to get at. I'd rather have a handle here. Now, just before I go, folk, this is the headstock containing the spindle. And this is the bed, the long bed going along the bed. That's hardened and ground usually. And this is the saddle. That's the saddle which contains the tool post. That's the saddle. It's, it runs up and down on the, on the bedway. And this is the tailstock. And it runs on the bedway, but runs on a different V. And it, it has a drill, so you can drill with this, or you can ream, and you can do all kinds of things with this. And you can put work between centers this way. See, like that there, like that. And you can turn between centers. So then you nearly want a tray because you use a lubricant, a, a white so, uh, soluble oil if, to cool it. You nearly want a tray and some of them have a, a stand underneath, but you can put them on a bench for small work. It just all depends. I'll try and post a few videos underneath here uh, that will give you an idea if you're interested in it. That's a long enough video. Um, I hope wish you luck if you're ever getting one. If to spare cash and you have to get rid of a few pounds for some reason or other, I mean it's it's a part of the equipment if you're running a business or anything like that. It would be a, a purchase for tax purposes and all that, so there's no problem that way. But yeah, if there's no one fit to use it, I suppose then it's, it's a waste. It's a waste. But you might get one second hand or some fellow that had it and he couldn't use it. God knows what. Come. So we let you go with that folks and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I hope that people didn't keep watching this unless they have a specific interest in it. Goodbye.